Today we're driving a 2020 Volkswagen GTI. We're in the top of the line Autobahn package with leather seats, a moonroof, all the bells and whistles, lots of safety stuff. And of course, the most important thing, a six speed manual transmission. As many of you know, I used to own a 2010 GTI and I haven't spent a ton of time in these Mark 7.5s. So this will run into the 2021 model year for the US market. Europe already has the Mark 8, but we will get that in 2022. So how does this Mark 7 still stack up to the competition? I've been really excited to drive this this week and uh, I'll just go ahead and say it. This is, this is still one of the best performance enthusiast minded cars on the market. As Jeremy Clarkson once said, it's all things to all men. I would say it's just all things to all drivers. This is uh, in any form, you kind of can't go wrong with the GTI, and that's how it's always been. There really aren't too many major differences here between this Mark 7 and my old Mark 6. There's plenty of space, it looks pretty good, the proportions are quite similar. Pull down these seats, it becomes an incredibly practical daily driver. I had my GTI throughout college and I just fit a bunch of stuff in the back when I was moving around. These leather seats are nice, but I will be honest and say that I do prefer the plaid interior from the Base S GTI, which is around $28,000. As spec, this Autobahn is 36.5. Yeah, in destination, it's a little over 37 grand, which is a little bit pricey, pretty close to Golf R territory. But that also goes into my next thought with this car, is I would kind of rather have the GTI over a Golf R. Unless, of course, I was maybe buying used or something. This GTI is just so much fun. 2 liter TSI, 200. 28 horsepower, 258 pound-feet of torque. It has a limited slip front differential and all trims, which is a super welcome addition. Incredibly balanced level of power, really nice performance. Larger brakes, ventilated disc brakes here too. That say GTI on them. You know, you guys know all about the GTI. It's been out forever, not much is really newsworthy here. You get Apple CarPlay, this optional eight inch touchscreen, automatic climate control, all this stuff. You have a few different drive modes you can select, eco, comfort, normal, sport. You can customize and adjust different parameters. So you have your dynamic chassis control, which is the suspension setting. Uh, you can change the steering weight, the uh, engine responsiveness, the front differential lock. Automatic cruise control has a couple different, or adaptive cruise control has a couple different settings, and the front lighting system will turn as well. Be sure to check that out in the Winery Road POV Night Drive. And of course, you can also adjust the engine sound between normal and sport. So we'll probably be driving this mostly in sport today, but uh, we'll start off in normal mode and see how it does. There's a little bit of a difference that you can tell with the adaptive dampers, and uh, that is worth noting. Cool thing about the GTI, uh, put it in reverse, and the, the VW emblem kicks up, and a little reverse camera pops out. So you can see, kind of neat, you can hear it engage in the back there. This also has the Fender sound system. We'll do a sound system test on that. It sounds pretty good. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's go for a drive. This is one of the few cars on sale where I would probably recommend both the manual and the automatic, or in this case, the dual clutch. This six speed is an absolute sweetheart of a gearbox. It's just the right amount of notchiness. It matches the rest of the controls. It's weighted perfectly.
it's a pleasure to row through the gears in this. They did lengthen the gear ratios a little bit since the Mark VI. Fifth gear is about where sixth gear used to sit on the highway at about 3,000 RPM. But it still works. It doesn't feel like it's uh, the, the gears are too long, kind of like they do in the GLI we drove a few weeks ago. And that brings up another point. This GTI is so much nicer to drive than the GLI. It's just more refined, it's better tuned, it's really well set up. I love it, this thing is awesome. So, still one of the greats. Let's do a little launch here, we'll put it into uh, sport mode, turn off traction control, and have at it. I don't think it's a deal breaker. It's definitely something that uh, is worth mentioning, but it's not horrible. It feels about like it always has. And it's definitely an improvement compared to the GLI. In sport mode, I think this thing sounds awesome too. Volkswagen really nailed their sound tuning with the sound back door. You can definitely feel a little bit of extra suspension firmness in sport mode. Let's put it into uh, custom and when we come to a stop we can make our exhaust a little bit louder because I do like the way it sounds. In daily driving I tend to leave it in normal mode just because it's a little bit quieter of a driving experience but for the purpose of filming let's put us into sport. that this has from the front end. That front differential was a really welcome addition to this Mark 7. You can turn off traction control and still get quite a bit of grip from the front end. Something I was never able to do in my 2010. traction control system in this is very well set up. It doesn't completely kill the power when you have wheel spin. It just kind of limits you in the background. You'll see the light flash a couple times, but it's very well tuned to work with the vehicle dynamic system that kind of will break individual wheels to help you turn in or send power across the front axle depending on which wheel has more traction. It's pretty trick stuff that works in the background, but it works really well. And it does a good job in the snow too because it just keeps you pointed in the direction that you want to go. I still say that one of the most fun cars I've ever driven on a back road is a GTI. Just for the reason that you can comfortably push this car and enjoy it. It has a really nice level of power. It's very well balanced and um, that's the key here. A lot of other hot hatches tend to, you know, they tend to be a little bit more hardcore in certain areas. I do still think that this is probably the daily driver king in the hot hatch segment. Something weird that I also noticed in the GLI, this manual GTI has the kick down pedal. So you, you push the accelerator pedal in and then there's just a little bit of a button at the bottom. Kind of a weird thing to feel on a manual transmission. Usually you only feel that on automatics and DSGs. I think 
think it's Volkswagen being a little bit lazy, wanting to save some uh, some parts costs there, but a little bit strange to experience. All right, let's see how this thing handles the corner. We're in sport mode. Grip for days. You let off, the front end turns in just a little bit more. Power is fantastic. You get just a little bit of turbo whoosh, and then when you let off, you hear a slight blow off valve noise. <laughs> and of course, in this Autobahn, you get all of your. Uh, cruise control settings, all that good stuff, adaptive cruise control, even in a manual car, which is fantastic. You can skip five mile an hour increments by holding the plus or minus button. You can adjust your following distance with the center button here, and it all works quite well. No complaints. There's also lane centering, but I've turned a lot of that stuff off. Very little wind noise, very quiet on the highway. Again, daily driver status, this is this is all you need. While we're just cruising here, let's go into Apple CarPlay and start our sound system test. That gives you guys a pretty good idea of this Fender sound system. It is a nice sounding audio system. Uh, it does a good job. Of course, you can turn off the screen here, which I love that feature in any car. You can select your gauges, your clock, all that good stuff. Let's hit one more entrance ramp here and uh, see how it performs.
it's just so smooth. Volkswagen and their two liter turbo is just about one of the best on the market. I was in an Audi A4 the other day and even that car is just so well tuned, it's well set up, it's really fun to drive. The S-Tronic transmission on that was fantastic. And this GTI just represents such good value for what you're getting. It's one of the best Volkswagen Audi products on sale and it just feels like a quality item and you really feel like you're getting more car than what you're paying for here. Especially if you just go for the base model. I mean, there's so much value there. This Autobahn package is, is really nice and it offers some really great features, but the, uh, the core of what makes a GTI great is all there in every trim level. I love it. Pretty fuel efficient on the highway, great for 32 highway, 24 in the city, though you can probably beat that pretty easily, especially with this taller sixth gear. Probably eke out 34, 35, 36 MPG if you stay out of boost. The ergonomics in here are pretty good. Cruise control got a little bit more confusing, I think, with the Mark 7. I did prefer the, the controls down here with the Mark 6. Uh, but all, all, all around, this thing is really easy to use. Uh, there's just some great features here that are really well placed. You get heated seats, pretty much everything you need. are really strong in this too. They feel awesome. Big improvement from how they were before. And if I had one complaint, it would be the rattles, the, the classic Volkswagen rattles. I haven't really driven a GTI or a Jetta or a Passat or anything in the Volkswagen lineup without them. There's just the interior plastics, they're random, they change, they're always adjusting according to temperature, but there's always a little rattle somewhere. And uh, kind of one of the reasons why I sold my GTI, to be honest, is there was something in the winter that I just couldn't pinpoint and it drove me nuts. So, you know, just something that you're gonna have to kind of go in and expecting, and that's a problem with most cars, unless if you're getting like a Lexus or a Honda or a Toyota, but they don't really make anything like this, so. Honestly, uh, it's kind of cool driving this and the WRX back to back because they're about the same price. They have about the same performance, similar buyer demographic, I would say. And um, you know, the WRX is probably a little bit more more fun and more of a hoon. But this GTI is just so much more refined and nicer to drive. And same with the GTI versus the Veloster M. I mean, if you're going to daily something and you want just a little more space and usability, it's GTI all the way. It's just so much fun to rev out. Maybe if I show you guys the shift or two, you get kind of an idea of the action there. It's just great. Pedals are perfectly placed for heel toe. Engine is responsive. Look at that rotation. Volkswagen's electronic trickery with the diff and the braking and the torque vectoring has pretty much eliminated most of the understeer and uh, does a really nice job of just making this car fun to drive but also very capable at the same time. 
All right, well, that's gonna wrap up this video on the Mark 7.5 GTI 2020. We've got one more year of this in the US, and uh, I think uh, we're already starting to see Mark 8's development vehicles out and about. Uh, so it'll be exciting to see what that car does. But again, I'm sure it'll just be a very natural evolution of what this is. I think uh, Volkswagen really did nail it with this generation. They got the looks right, they got the driving dynamics right, the feature set is good, the infotainment is quite nice as well. It's a little bit laggy and slow, so if they were to improve something, that would be uh, at the top of my list. But you go in here. Apple CarPlay is awesome. It's really nice and responsive. Eh, let's see. Let's go into a nav here. See what that does. It's pretty. Eh, it's pretty responsive when you're scrolling around and looking at the map. You can see lots of different parameters here. Driving data since start. There we go. We got 23 miles to the gallon on that drive. Set eco climate control. There's a lot of uh, a lot of menus in here, which is quite nice. It's definitely better than some infotainments. Like this is a lot more responsive than Subaru. Uh, but right when you start it up in the morning, it can tend to be a little bit laggy. Oh, and there's still a manual handbrake. And if I had to complain some more, there's lots of gloss plastics everywhere. But if you do a nice job of cleaning them carefully with a nice microfiber. You should have too many issues with uh, scratches. Otherwise, all the materials in here are quite nice. You even get ambient lighting here and then the door sills. All right, guys, there's the GTI. We'll be posting some more videos on this on the Windy Road YouTube channel, and Charlie from Daily Motor will also do that. If you want to follow what I'm up to, check me out on Instagram at thetofer2. And... Uh, yeah, if you guys are ever buying tires from Tire Rack, I also have an affiliate link in the description. So if you want to support the channel and throw a little bit of uh, stuff my way, uh, use that link before you buy on Tire Rack. That's kind of where I do all my research and, and tire purchase decisions. And if you drive anything like I do, you will be visiting them annually. Oh, and probably one of my favorite things about the GTI is the little key shank. I miss doing this constantly. Yeah. <laughs> I think if my Mark VI were like this, I would have kept it a little bit longer because this is this is more fun to drive than the Mark VI was. It's a little bit more exciting. Probably more track worthy too with the brakes. I can never get the brakes to work on my Mark VI. There just wasn't enough clamping force and cooling. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.